hey, welcome to U.S. History with Lennox. I am Lennox, and we are right in the middle of time period four, which covers 1800 to 1848. And today, we're going to talk about topic 4.4, America on the world stage. Now, I'm going to take you to a point just coming out of the War of 1812 when the Treaty of Ghent is signed in 1814. While it does bring the war to an end, it really doesn't clear up the relationship between us and Canada. So what James Monroe, president, is going to do is send John Quincy Adams over to London to negotiate a treaty with England. That treaty is essentially going to establish the border between the United States and Canada along the 49th parallel, as well as set up a joint occupation of the Oregon Territory. Meanwhile, Florida is still in the hands of Spain. But they're having their own issues. First of all, they removed most of their troops from Florida due to rebellions throughout South America. The Seminole Indians, along with some runaway slaves and others who had left the United States, were causing some problems for our country as they were raiding U.S. territory and then diving back into Florida. So President Monroe is going to send Andrew Jackson in 1817 to make that stop. Now, Jackson was given specific instructions. You're going into a foreign country, dude. You're going into Spanish Florida. Do not engage with anybody. In fact, you can only go in and defend yourself. The only purpose you have, Jackson, is to defend American citizens and American land holdings. Well, Jackson went ahead and attacked two Spanish forts. He executed two Seminole chiefs along with a couple British citizens. Not good. And you shouldn't be surprised that England and Spain were not too happy with us. In fact, they were ticked. And while they had absolute every right to be angry with our country, they wanted to avoid war, especially Spain. The effect of all this is that Spain recognized that we wanted Florida. And that's going to set the stage for what's known as the adams onus Treaty, which will be signed in 1819. In this treaty, Spain is going to agree to sell Florida to the United States and will also create a distinct border between the United States and the holdings of Spain within North America. But now the question is, what is going to be the role of the United States within the Western Hemisphere with regards to other European powers? By the early 1820s, there were a lot of European powers that had really been thrown out of the Western Hemisphere. When we saw revolutions in Colombia, Mexico, Chile, Peru, and Argentina. And what Monroe did when these revolutions happened is he immediately recognized the independence of those countries. And he established not only diplomatic relationships with them, but also trade relations with them. The manufacturers, the businessmen of New England were extremely excited about the fact that they had new markets they could sell their products to. And as this idea and these new relationships start to grow, the United States starts thinking maybe we should take it a step further to keep Europe completely out of the Western Hemisphere. That brings us to 1823 and the Monroe Doctrine. And the Monroe Doctrine essentially said this, the Western Hemisphere is the backyard of the United States. And what happens here is our business. And if there's problems here, we will deal with them. What we do with the Monroe Doctrine is we declare a level of authority over the Americas. But remember, this was not all about political power. It was also about economic power in the region because of all these new trade relationships that were being created. And not only are we discovering new trade markets in the Western Hemisphere, we're now starting to go west in the Pacific towards China and getting involved in the silk and porcelain markets. So our expansion is actually moving beyond the borders of North America, and we're starting to move further into the world. Now, a lot of stuff still has to happen, but you can kind of see the baby steps that are leading us to this move into the world. We'll talk about all that other fun stuff in another video. But for today, what I hope you see is how we are starting to develop an American foreign policy that goes a little bit beyond that policy of neutrality. Hey, before you leave, if you can hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and we'll see you on the next one.